What's going on, traders, and welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Watch List. In the weekly watch list, I do a technical analysis and give you some of my thoughts on the tickers here on the left. We have the broad market comprised of SPY, the Qs, and IWM. After that, we look at some companies. We have Apple, Netflix, Tesla, Alibaba, Facebook, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Amazon. The market continues to grind higher, even though we've had some of the worst economic numbers come out in all of history. And that's why here at Trade Brigade, we really encourage you guys to trade off of technical levels and the chart, as opposed to what the news is saying and the talking heads. So if there's anything you take away from these videos, it's please to use charts and not just trade blindly based on the news. If you want to get better at trading the charts and technical analysis, I do offer a one-on-one -on -one service. If this video gets over 100 likes, I'll release a snippet of some of the conversations I've had with students in the past, and uh, you can see what you'll be getting yourself into and the value that we can provide. All the free resources we do offer, including Instagram, free newsletter, and Discord server is all linked down below in the description as well, and there's tons to be learned in those communities also. Starting off on our SPY weekly chart, as always, a few key things to note. We did get the week of sideways consolidation that we were looking for in last week's video. Essentially, the range and value of this week's candle is very similar to the prior week. This now is forming a bull flag where we see the flag pull here and the flag is now starting to take shape. So a bullish pattern forming in a bullish environment overall. We did get the breakdown of our support trend line, but that happened through a means of time as opposed to price, which we'll talk about more on the daily chart. And lastly, if I put the Fibonacci's from high to low back on, you can see that we essentially bounced right off of our 50% retracement and where did we wind up? right back up at our 61.8 retracement. So another reason why the bull flag, if it plays out, could be that much stronger. So on the daily chart, it becomes that much more clear what I mean by a break through time as opposed to a breakaway with price. Our support trend line was here and we just went sideways through it through means of time as opposed to price really pulling back hard off of it and establishing value lower. So we'll get rid of that for now. Uh, and right now, we talked about in last week's video, price coming down to retest our 275.17 support since we had the look above and fail back into this range, but that didn't happen. So what I want you to keep in mind is that because that didn't happen, it's just that much more of a signal that the bulls are you know, increasing their strength. We have a higher low forming here, higher low, higher low, you know, so essentially the stair steps continue in the upwards direction instead of creating an equal low to what we had in there. Instead, we created that higher low. We could draw that in as a new support point. So we'll call that right around 279. If we look back here as well, there's some price data around that area. So 279, a support below us now as well. But like I said, I think the continuation and the bull flag wants to play out in an ideal world. The situation that we would see is a move over our support or resistance here to our $300 whole dollar. Uh, resistance psychological resistance as well as that 200 SMA on the daily chart we would then see a pullback into this level at 294 to confirm it as support and from there we could then make a move to our next resistance up at 313.08 so that's kind of the ideal situation to the upside if that played out that would be picture perfect where we would again continue to see those lo uh, higher lows continue to form higher highs continue to form and the uptrend remains intact to the downside though if things start to roll over we are covered with support we have our 288.20 level which if you've been watching intraday is a very very stubborn level so keep that one in mind as support to the downside but if it breaks we could see a move down into our new uh, our new um, higher low here at 279 if that one gives again we're still covered to the downside we have 275.17 and then our double bottom here coinciding with that 50 SMA on the daily at 271.66. Anything lower than that, and again, I don't really imagine it goes that low, but just to be prepared, we do have our next level down below at 263.02. So on the queues, you can see that our support trend line, again, it, it's really just broken through a means of time as opposed to price. The price is still continuing to make higher highs and higher lows on a daily time frame. You can see higher you know, essentially just stair-stepping in the upwards direction in the last four days of the week. We are starting to fill this gap here from 223.83 to 229.28, so keep that in mind. There's very little resistance here, and I think it could happen very early on in the week, which could coincide with SPY moving to 300. Price could come right up here to 229.28, fill that gap. And again, the picture-perfect thing that could potentially happen is a retest to confirm this as support here at 223.83, and then a continuation to that all-time high um, slash, you know, our prior levels over there at 237.28. So that's the picture perfect scenario to the upside. I'm not saying it has to play out that way, but that again would be the ideal situation for the bulls. Instead, if we see a pullback and more level, uh, I mean, uh, more pullback and movement to the downside, rather, 
we are looking at support to come back into play at 219.50, anything lower than that. And we have our price level at 214.49. And from there, you know, sort of that chop zone that we talked about in here. Again, keep in mind, we were targeting the opposite end of the range here at 206, but we did put in a higher low. So we'll draw that little double bottom in here. Uh, we'll even call it back to this one. So that's at 211.16. Look for that as support. If that breaks, we're looking at 206.35. And lastly, IWM. This one, again, if you just look at it in terms of percentage, SPY was up 1%, Qs were up 1%, IWM was up 3.8%. So it's just, it moves that much larger in terms of percentage, which is no surprise because it's a bit of a cheaper ticker. Um, but, you know, just the movement on it, if you want to capture some bigger percentages, go to IWM. Again, I think the move here, we targeted uh, the retest of this as support, which it was support. You can see, again, we found that hammer did provide and hold up uh, and then bounced prices higher. I think the new target remains up here at 136.20, anything higher. And just like the Qs, we have a gap to fill up to 141.01, higher than that. And we have our 145 resistance up here. To the downside, though, just keep in mind how far above we are uh you know, how how much distance is between the price right now and the support trend line that we have in place. It has not even come close to violating it once. So a pullback here would be completely fine for IWM to maintain the uptrend. We want to see anything really remain above this 124 level. But if it breaks down and the support trend line breaks down, our next levels below are at 119 or 120, just about lower than that. We have 117.25. And if things get really nasty, 110.73. But again, I think the move wants to be continuation to the upside. If you've made it to this point in the video, I'm sure you're enjoying the analysis, so be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on bell notifications. That way you know every single time I drop a new analysis. Also don't forget, if this video gets over 100 likes, I'll release a snippet from a one-on-one -on -one call with a student explaining some of my strategies in the market. So jumping right into Apple, you can see that we essentially got the gap fill here on Friday, moving right into the lows of this candle back here from February where the gap started from. That being said, the ideal situation that I could potentially see playing out on Apple is either a move into this 314.07 area where we have many more data points as resistance now that, you know, we are below it, it will act as resistance. Uh, and from there, we might see some sideways consolidation and then price pull back into this 303 level. From there, that would be a buy in my opinion after this nice uptrend, especially, you know, this pullback is that much more likely because we're at resistance, the gap has filled, and we've also been on six days to the upside. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this pullback at all. From there, again, if that is a potential buy and it looks like Apple wants to bounce from that level, retest this level, and if we get continuation after that, a move to the all-time high up here at 327.40, which again, sounds weird with everything going on, but again, we're trading the charts and not the news. If that situation does not play out, however, then we have support mapped out to the downside. If, this, if the pullback is more aggressive than just something into 303, then again, we have everything mapped out. We have a double top here that was at 298.77 and then acted as support on this Wednesday. So keep that in mind as a level below us. Further down, we have 294.57 and lower than that. Again, this has plenty, plenty of data points that it should act as support. That's at 286.50. So Netflix forming almost a little V-shaped recovery from this little pullback that it had into previous all-time highs. Again, based on the candle that we have formed on Friday, I wouldn't be surprised, again, after being up a few days in a row, to see a pullback into this level at 427.67. From there, if it breaks, we're looking at 414.39, and then if that one gives all the way back down to this 393 level. But again, I think, you know, based on this V-shaped recovery and kind of what's happening, some sideways consolidation, and again, a potential breakout over this uh, 439.23 level to retest the all-time high could be in store. So that's kind of what I'm watching for here. But again, the candle would lead me to believe sideways consolidation. Buyers aren't really sure if they want to push it higher. Sellers don't really know if they want to push it lower. Watch for something to happen either, either over this three or 439 or below the 427. So Tesla, we made a great alert on this in our Discord chat room, which I'll put up on the screen now. You can see that we were looking for a breakout of the two-day range that we were sort of chopping around in. You can see that this is the range here on the daily chart and we did get the breakout to the upside in which case we move to our next target up here at 8.1864. If we continue this little uptrend that we formed where we had a nice little short little bull flag, we could potentially form another one here. If we see some sideways consolidation around this 8.18 level, we are gonna target our 8.63 level uh, on the next you know, leg up and anything higher than that is this 9.11.82 level that's sort of really up high up here at the top of the chart. That is best case scenario for the bulls, but again, anything can sort of happen with Tesla and 
Elon Musk as the CEO. We are covered to the downside. Again, support coming into play here at 773.32. Anything lower, we have 743 and 706. So Alibaba is kind of in one of those situations, in my opinion, where it's going to have to be a wait and see again, sort of like what we talked about in last week's video. We've essentially formed an inverted hammer slash indecision candle right here at a key level of, um, you know, chop, if you will. You can see that we had lows in here and then lows breaking down below, and then it acted as resistance kind of in the web effect there. So we're going to have to wait and see. This candle would sort of lead me to believe that we want to see a pullback, but again, I'm only I'm only going to play this if it really shows clear signs of weakness under this 199.50 level, uh, or if it plays and shows some strength above this 202.05 level. So waiting for a move to either side of uh, those resistance or support from there, you know, to the upside, our target would then become this 207.50 level. Anything higher, and it's going to start to run into our resistance trend line, which has acted quite strongly in the past. If we zoom out just a little bit, again, you can see how strong it's been all these times rejecting price. So if it gets up there, I would imagine that would be a good short opportunity. Uh, if it does break higher than it though, 214, uh, 215 based on the highs here. Breaking down, uh, we do have that 50 SMA acting as support, which will be below us, but we have this sort of zone down here between 195 and 193 that should act as support. All right, so we did fill the gap here that was left in the chart. That's kind of self-explanatory, but we do now have a gap below. So we'll draw in this little support level here. If we break down below 199, which again, we're quite high and away from that level right now. But if we do break down, there's a quick gap to be filled to this 197 level. Keep that in mind if we ever do get back down there. We filled the gap to the upside like we talked about though. And I think you know with the rest of the market, if it continues to push higher, we are gonna target our 218.36 level, which is the highest from here on our first initial little pullback from this whole coronavirus uh, sell-off. Anything higher than that and it's just going to be the all-time highs it's kind of crazy to imagine that this is going to be a full v-shaped recovery but again i've said it in the past i said it in this video we're going to trade the chart and not the news anything to the downside though and this breaks we are looking at that 200 sma sort of hovering in between our next uh, support below if this range gives so keep that in mind that's right around 191 at the moment it will continue to creep up higher and you know if if it does come to it and this starts to coincide with the gap fill that should be a super support and uh, that would definitely be a buy in my opinion so NVIDIA, just like the queues, giving up the uh, support trend line, but just through a means of time as opposed to a breakaway of price. So we'll get rid of it for now, but just know that the uptrend is very well intact. We can target our all-time high up here at 315.87 or 316.32 if you want to play it to the penny there, but you can see that we sort of have a double top. So I would just imagine that this 315 level comes into play a little bit earlier than that resistance there. Give yourself a heads up and plenty of warning. Um, so keep that in mind. Anything over that and it's blue sky territories, whole and half dollars to the upside. If we get any sort of pullback here, then we are looking to maintain the uptrend, which we can redraw to look something like this, um, where, you know, this is very loose, but you can see that, you know, every time that the price comes down into this level, it sort of starts to bounce. So target any sort of pullback into there as viable and this upward channel will remain intact. You know, we can draw in the upper resistance portion, something like that. It's a little off, but you can see rejection, rejection. Uh, something like that. So that would be sort of the target and what I would be watching for on any sort of upward move here in NVIDIA and as far as a pullback entry. But if we break down below, we have supports. We have uh, 286.15, anything lower than that. And it's this area here at 272.35. Microsoft continuing to just kind of grind higher with the market. It's kind of sitting in no man's land right now. We were talking about this pattern where we saw a hammer and then inverted hammer. Same thing happened here and it didn't play out. It was exactly the opposite to be exact. Um, but, you know, that is what it is. If we draw in a level here, which is sort of midway through our range, as well as some structure before this sort of selling happened, you can see it was kind of resistance, kind of support. I don't really think it merits keeping the line on the chart, but if you know that's something you're interested in, just know that that was there. I think the next target and move is you know just either some sideways consolidation through this range and then a move up to this 187.75. From there, a target would be the all-time high at 190.82. If we pull back off of it, we're looking for support to come back into play at 179.08. Again, that's a key one based on all our touches here and where the gap sort of filled. Anything lower than that, and we have one. 7421. And lastly, Amazon, which is really interesting just because we are starting to get a break of our resistance trend line. We had a form a hammer form on it just on Thursday's action, and then we remained above it on Friday's action with a lower tail, sort of retesting it, if you will, and then bouncing us a little bit higher. So I think from here the move wants to be a filling of the triangle where you know we this is the triangle. You can see that's the triangle. We want to go back up to the top and refill at uh, 24.59. So keep that in mind to the upside. If we break out over that level, 
Of course, there is this all-time high resistance, which is at uh, 24.75, but I think the move could be to the whole um, you know, $2,500 mark, which is going to be psychological resistance. It's just a nice round number. I think that the price, you know, if it starts to get up there, that's just kind of where it's going to end up. To the downside, though, if we do start to break down, and this is sort of a fake break of the resistance trend line, we are looking at support to come back into play at 2314. Anything lower than that, we have our 227815 level, and then quite a ways to fall below to 218333. That's going to wrap up this week's episode of the Weekly Watchlist. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, let me know down below in the comments section or by leaving the video a thumbs up. Again, remember to trade the charts and not the news. Be open to trading all directions. And with that, I wish you a green trading week.